Okay, so today I'm boring uh, holes in orifices. Now that sounds like run of the mill, but what I'm doing is I'm boring micro holes. I don't even know if you can see that anyway. I'm boring, you know, darn near microscopic size holes in orifices. Okay, now this is an orifice that I made, that's why it's a blank. Okay, this is the orifice that I'm replicating. Now, I, when I made the the orifice, I actually uh, worked with the client, and what happened was, I was only able to get three sixteenths, or I'm sorry, three thirty two stock. That was the smallest stock I could get, the smallest hex stock I could get. This orifice here is actually smaller than that. If you can see, it actually, you know, this this orifice actually dwarfs that orifice. So the stock that I'm using is slightly bigger than stock. Um, it does pose a problem though when you get into sizes that small, okay? And I'm not gonna get into all that today. What my mission here today is, is to show you how to bore small, tiny, you know, almost microscopic sized holes in orifices. Now that hole there is about 13 10 thousandths of an inch. So uh, 0 0.0135 I believe is the size. Uh, it's a number 80. That's the drill size that we're using. Okay. So normally, you know, when you drill, drill orifices, you're using a pinch chuck and then you're doing it by hand because you, you know, you, you want to be able to get through there without distorting the hole. Well, the problem is, is that the entry point is so small and the, the actual size of the drill comes from a drill index here. Okay. Is so small. And believe me, I've done them smaller than this. I've done them up to 93, which is uh, not even half the size of the half the size of the drill that I'm drilling today. As you can see, I wrote myself a note. I broke one in the process. Okay. Anyway, the the drill that's missing from the end right here, that's the drill that we're going to be drilling that hole. Okay. So you can kind of see there. Now, unless you've done it, you don't really consider a lot of the obstacles that get in the way of being able to successfully drill a true hole at, uh, I mean, a hole at true center. There's a lot of obstacles because of the size that's involved, okay? I've already drilled out these orifices, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my solution for doing this. Well, first of all, not doing it by hand, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm using a mini lathe to do it. I turn the orifices out of the lathe, I'm using a mini lathe. Uh, maybe you're saying, hey Frank, you know, uh, how are you using a lathe? Isn't that kind of high speed? You're supposed to do these by hand. Well, I'm using a super low speed. I'm using probably, I don't know, 30, 40 revolutions per second to turn the, uh, to turn the drill into that, into that hole. Now, you would think that, you know, I could just take this end, put it in the chuck, and everything would be great okay I just stick the drill in there everything's good well that's not the case the reason is is because when you when you try to check up something like this the way these chucks are are these on any lathe is they kind of have uh, little ridges you can see it on the outside but there's these ridges are also on the inside okay and when you get uh, something this small in there okay it wants to go between ridges. I mean, it won't go in there true. Try to chuck it up. It won't go in there true. I already have the the uh, the uh, drill chucked up in this in this pinch chuck here. This pin chuck, okay, or pin vise, whatever they call it. And so I'm going to kind of show you. Uh, let me move this out of the way. I'm going to kind of show you what happens when I when I uh, actually put this part into the into the chuck on a lathe. Uh, here, let me let me grab this. I was just gonna turn off the camera and come back, but I could I don't know if I could do this one handed. So okay, so now I have to get this to be real small, okay? And then I gotta put the little workpiece in there. And okay. Remember I'm dealing with three sixteenths stock. So it's extremely small. 
and it wants to go between the ridges on the chuck, okay? Now, looks great, right? Well, the problem is, when I turn it on, oops, when I turn it on, see how that's wobbling? It's because I could never get the shaft of that true centered now because of the way that these jaws are on the three jaw vise. Okay, so what do I do? Okay, well, the solution is put a bigger shaft in there. How do I do that? I've already turned down the piece. The final step in this, by the way, is drilling out the piece. I don't. I won't want to go through drilling out the piece, then screwing the piece up, and then you know, I've already drilled it. I've already gone through all that due diligence because that's the hardest part about doing these orifices. Okay. So what I end up doing is I use a larger piece of stock. Okay. Stepped up into half inch stock. Drilled a hole in the end of it. And then I just take one of these orifices and just screw it in there, okay? And uh, it's kind of hard to do this one-handed. Uh, let me see if I can stand this up while I'm doing it. Okay. Anyway, I turn this guy in there. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you can see this. Whoops. Anyway, I'm going to come back on camera once I have this turned into there. All right, so it's turned in there now. So now what I've done is I've turned the orifice into this little workpiece. Now, on, the, on this end is, is the hole, you know, for the, for the workpiece. But what I did was I actually chamfered it out so that I could actually get the, the piece that's holding the drill bit in there, the pin chuck, the, the head of the pin chuck. To kind of penetrate a little bit into there and i wanted to have a little bit of width just so that this can settle into these teeth great so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take out my other piece that i put in there so i'll come back on camera once i've done that okay so now i've chucked it up in here okay so the piece is chucked up in there you can see the little the little head of the uh of the orifice in there okay it's actually centered, and when I turn it on, there's no wobbling because that piece is centered. So, now I'm ready to go. Now, what I do is I turn it on a very slow speed, okay? So, I go a speed that's a little bit faster than that, actually. I go about, probably about 40 revs per second, or per minute. And then I bring my little, you know, my little piece here, and then I run it in there and just run that piece through. Uh, it's not too bad. It probably takes me about two minutes to drill one, if that. I go very slowly. I do it with my fingers so I can feel the tension on the drill chuck because I don't want to break uh, uh, or on the drill because I don't want to break the drill. You know, those things are like like a few bucks a piece. So uh, just run it in there, and that's how I run it through. So now I'm going to go ahead and do one. So I'm going to shut the camera off while I go ahead and get one started. Okay, so now I'm drilling the uh, piece. Here's here's the pin chuck. Here's the standard chuck that comes with the lathe. Here's the lathe head. I do it at a very low speed, so it's probably turning at about 50 RPM. And I have to actually turn the wheel with my fingers just so I can feel the drill bit in there doing the work. So I just kind of let it go, you know. And this thing will just keep moving around uh, you know, as it as it advances, it'll keep allowing me to do it. But I do it finger tight because if I do it, you know, if I grab the handle, I'm not going to be able to sense that drill bit going through the piece. So I do it like this, just so that I don't have any tension on the bit. And as you can see, it goes in there pretty straight. And I'm just about at the end of the uh, at the end of the hole now. So just kind of let it go through here, and I do it very very slowly. And you can just kind of see as I turn it, you know, I mean, it's just going bike runs at a time as it cuts through the material. But it is actually cutting in there, and eventually it will come through the head. It's 
kind of hard to verify to see it you know visually so I know where the chuck is and where the end of the chuck is and where the the workpiece is and uh, you can kind of sense it a little bit when it gets through but it's pretty hard to sense with just the, the feel of your fingers there I can kind of tell visually once it's broke through and I believe it has I don't know, it hasn't broke through yet it's pretty close though I believe that's it right there because it's uh, there's no resistance now when I when I turn the back wheel so that's now it's broken through so uh, the next shot that I get here I'm gonna turn the chuck off here uh, now the next shot you can see it coming out of there I'm gonna take it out of here and then I'm gonna verify that I have a hole on the end of it uh, well I'll, I'll come back on camera once I have the hole Oh yeah, I did want to show that to you. I don't know if you could see it there, but you can actually see the, uh, the drill bit going through the center of the workpiece. I have my little high intensity bulb up here to see what's going on. So you can actually see it as it goes through the workpiece. So I've verified that it passes through and then I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna pull it off of there and then look at it and make sure it's gone all the way through. But obviously it has if the drill bit's going through the workpiece this way here okay so now I'm gonna just go ahead and turn it off and I'll pull the uh, pull the bit out of there as you can see and the reason I do it this way is because it's such a pain in the hat it painted the ass to do these tiny work pieces uh, that obviously I mean to do it by hand is is just too much. I mean, I've done these by hand, but I've got so much meat on the end of one of these little uh, pieces because I machined them that I literally have to go through, I would say anywhere, it's, it's probably a quarter inch, and a quarter inch at a time on a tiny drill bit like this with barely any teeth on it takes a while. So if I can get it to go through a little bit faster this way at a limited speed and not break the drill bit, I'm good to go. And as you can see, there's the there's the piece right there. You can see the hole in the center of it. And then I just kind of hold it up to the light to verify that I've, you know, that I've drilled through. I don't know if you can see there, but anyway, uh, trust me, it's, it's drilled through. So uh, I think that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, just in case you could see, it's a little bit better to see it out of the light here. If I get this to pull focus here, uh, there it is. Anyway. The center of that, that's not a speck of dust, that's actually the hole, the center of the hole. So, drill in from the back side, went to the front side. Now, if this would have had a, uh, I'm thinking about doing these orifices where they have a, uh, an actual divot in the top of them, so I could maybe do them from the front side, so I could actually limit how much of the drill bit is actually out here, because the problem is, is having the drill bit out this much from the chuck makes the drill bit flex too much and you know it puts more stress on the drill bit so it's more likely that it's going to break now this is a number 80 okay so uh, number 80 is a pretty small drill bit but I've done them up to 93 which is probably about four times the width of a human hair and those are the drill bits you really got to worry about because you can't even I mean you know th those are so thin they're just unbelievably small and they put such an unbelievably small hole in whatever you're drilling. So I guess, you know, the method probably does have to change if you go beyond a, an 80 drill bit. Uh, I would say probably to the point to where, yeah, you do have to have a limited amount here. Now having this amount out on a number 80, if you're careful, you can get away with it. But I'd never be able to get away with this, like, say, on a number 93 or something like that. Forget about it. It'd, it'd just be impossible. So, uh, so that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Okay, so a little footnote on the video. In case you've never used a pin, ch uh, pin chuck, this is what a pin chuck is. It's either called a pin vise or a pin chuck. I believe it's called a pin chuck. Anyway, you chuck up, uh, you know, a these little tiny uh, jeweler size drills in there, and it gives you the ability to hold them. Now, this one will actually go up to, uh, you know, like a size 99, which is like the smallest that you could get. 
there's probably there's probably smaller uh, bores available, but they're probably at laser sizes. They're probably done as lasers, not as uh, pieces of steel. I, I'm not sure how that works. If you had to drill something smaller than that, I've never known anybody that's had to drill anything smaller than that. I've never had to drill anything smaller than that myself, so I don't know. But anyway, this is the pin chuck, and you know, uh, I have a normal pin chuck set, but it's actually too big for these drills, so uh, I ended up buying this one just to be able to use on that lathe to complete these tasks. So that's it. That's how it's all done. As you can see, you know, this is this is how the piece is chucked up in there, and it's all good to go. It, it's it's worked. I've done it five times now, so everything's hunky dory. The the big deal about it is, you know, chucking up this this drill piece in there because it always wants to go crooked well you know you got to get it into straight obviously and uh, once you get that done you can chuck it up into the into the uh, chuck that you that comes with your lathe and just chuck it up in there you know run it through there and you're good to go so thanks for watching the video i hope you learned something